Hello, everyone. Um, welcome to our webinar, GTL webinar sessions. And today we're talking about academic culture in the USA, sharing some of our experiences and tips for you from what we've noticed throughout our years and would like to share with you and also give you a heads up of how it will look like. Okay, so my name is Bella. I am originally from Russia and I'm currently in Portugal. Um, I study Chinese language and literature and education at Smith. And I have been to different countries. I've studied abroad in like several, at least four countries. So I have a lot of anecdotes and lessons I could share with you. And I'm excited to let you know how, what I thought about um, different countries and their approach to academic culture. So. Stay tuned for those. And hi, everyone. My name is Yi Wen Cui, and I also go by Lawa. And I'm a recent graduate student from Emerson College Media Design Program. I have cross-cultural experiences among Asia, Europe, and the US. And now I am an interactive designer, emphasizing human-centered design and a vlogger. And um, today we will like uh, give you a short introduction about what is academic culture in the U.S. And then Bella will share uh, her personal story with all of you about like the classroom participation in the U.S. And then we will have a short interaction part and take a look at a class in the U.S. After that, I will share about my personal story about um, choosing a major and how did I find my passion? How did I motivate with my interest? Uh, after that, we will have uh, like question and answer part, but um, you can also like have, have interaction with us in our community. So let's begin. Great. So we would like to start by just giving you a heads up of a general term which treats academic culture and what, it, what do we sort of mean with that. And it's simple as like countries have different cultures, so does academia. The ways how people study, do research, participate and communicate can really vary across different places. And that's what makes each of them interesting in a way and experiential. So the approach and attitudes, the values we have towards our academics really makes us unique and interesting to interact with because the way how we study, if we just continue using the same way, sure it works, but why not trying something new and different and exploring other methods because different subjects use different approaches. So should, so should we use different methods when we try new subjects. So let's learn from each other and we hope our experiences sort of help you understand a little bit better and also maybe get inspired to actually try and go abroad somewhere to go out of your comfort zones. Um, for me, I would like to start by sharing just beginning from my uh, US college experience and how it started. I would like to share with you a couple of personal anecdotes and my, I would say, academic cultural shocks. <laughs> which were, first of them, definitely never be late to your US classes. I have this assumption that in the US class, I could arrive on time, meaning if the class is at 9 a.m. and I show up at 8.59, that's okay. But no, guess what? At 8.59, they've already started the class. So I realized that I should be coming back maybe a little bit earlier to that class. A second lesson was, this was something funny, is how to locate your professor. <laughs> I guess that was, um, that was something new to me because I come from a mindset where the professor would be standing in front of the class. As I always imagined it, it would look like in a university. But it was um, an experience to try to find my professor, how you can see on the second image because I entered the class and I remember walking around and asking my classmates, have you seen the professor? Do you know who teaches this class? And everyone was like, oh yeah, he's like there somewhere checking something. And I remember once he was on the floor, one he was like lying on the desk within the student. Sometimes he just sits 
in one of the student desks and just does some things. It was very open, very unusual to me, but it was fun in a way to see professors who are so open. And which leads me to the lesson three. Professors are super fun to interact with because the classes are student-centered, meaning that they're really there just for your support, for you to thrive. And I. I didn't realize that until I actually had a couple of classes of how open professors can be and how just um, they treat you as a friend. And I remember the same math professor, he was like, if you're thinking about offending me, many have tried and failed. So go on and tell me what you want to tell me. <laughs> so they were really open to um, criticism or like feedback or like you sharing your experiences with them. And I guess these three were something, my first impressions from the first um, first classes I've taken in the first semester. I guess my biggest portion of um, this webinar, I'd like to focus on classroom differences and things I've struggled with from the beginning. And I think for many people who are not familiar with the Western culture, for example, it's harder to adjust in a way. So I think active participation is something that was tough for me and I needed to adjust and then taking initiative and classes being self-driven, having like a, being in a classroom with diverse teaching methods, professors in the US tend to use Socratic questions, which means that they sort of want to pull the obvious out of their students. And then the student professor relationship, how I mentioned before, it's very open and asking questions is actually welcome. To me, I had, <clears throat> excuse me, I had this mindset that asking a question means I, oops, sorry, asking a question means I don't understand something or I'm not smart enough in a way, so I avoided asking them. But in the US, actually, if you don't ask them, it means that you are not paying attention to the class or you're not interested in the subject. So questions are actually welcome. And I think my first semester at Smith could be characterized by Harry's image. I was super confused. <laughs> I was very lost. Meanwhile, now when I'm a senior, I can totally say that I'm Harmione when I just jump into any conversation without fear. So it's, it takes time to adjust. So don't worry if you cannot be like her in the first day you step into a classroom, but it's a process. So what helped me become more participative in class? Definitely get to know your professors and your classmates, approaching them from the beginning of the class. I think this is very important and I mastered this. Literally every single new class I enter, I just, after the class finishes, I start talking to the professor, I approach them. Hi professor, I would like to know your maybe expectations or something I should be taking into consideration. I'm also a shy person. So letting the professor know you, it's very helpful. And then ask them to share the PPT, in case for me that was helpful because there were some words I wouldn't understand in the beginning and seeing them and me taking notes was helpful. So I think that's very important. And then going to their office hours and being prepared to contribute is important. And big differences, being attentive is also they really see if you are there for them in their class and interested even though you're not talking. But if you just come there without interest, they totally see that and that can affect you. Um, next one is talking to your classmates. That was also helpful because when you <clears throat> get to know them, get familiar with them, uh, it becomes easier to then also participate because my initial feeling, for example, was that I thought I'll be judged in a way, but then when you start meeting friends with them, they encourage you to say something or I had like friends who'd be like, Bella shared a nice point with me in this um, short talk we had. Would you like to share it out loud? So having this like support from your peers is actually helpful and gives you confidence. And then um, it really also uh, contributes to when you have group works because you're already comfortable with them. Another thing I would suggest is to take notes from them. I would look at how they like participate and what questions they ask and know that for myself. And then mastering your English. Take notes in English, think in English, speak more English. I think this is a big one for confidence, lack of confidence when you're trying to participate is that you're not sure if your English is good enough. Maybe I have an accent, maybe I don't pronounce words correctly. 
but that's okay. You, it's, it's very different and professors know that they have international students and nobody's gonna stop you or judge you for that. So definitely go ahead and speak more English and meet new people from day one. Um, I guess to sort of summarize what I've been sharing is, to me, what helped me was identifying the problem and then searching for a solution, right? The moment you acknowledge you cannot participate, then you ask yourself, why am I not participating? So I listed previously, like you could have one of those reasons, you could have another one. And then how can I improve what will help me to sort of get better at this? So to me, I sat with my friends and I sort of talk and we have centers in the, like every college has resources and centers that they help students. So I think that was very helpful to me to actually have people that would sit down with me, break my thinking down and um, sort of communicate to me how I could improve. And then what helped me personally was going for short uh, summer camps or participating in some leadership programs where I'll be around group of people and I would have to talk in English, but I also have to lead certain things. And I really, when I was working in a summer camp, I couldn't tell um, the kids I cannot lead this activity, right? I had to be there because I was um, in a position of a role model to them. So it pushes you to act and then you sort of build this habit of speaking in front of a group of kids and then speaking in front of a group of counselors and then I come back to college and I'm okay speaking in front of my class. So I think these are my my suggestions to you really um, sit and identify what is the problem and then search of how could that be improved. And then um, just to summarize, be the first one breaking the silence. I think this is something has been helping me now. Uh, when I'm still on the stage of um, trying to figure out how to participate in class. So build on someone's point, ask questions, paraphrase, highlight someone's point. These are all like tips you can use to begin a conversation and start participating in a classroom. So there are different ways to participate. And then it's better to ask and then regret that you did not. I think this is my biggest lesson and something I always keep in mind when I'm in college is I'm in this college, I'm paying the money to be in this college, it's my education, why should I care about what somebody's going to think of me or somebody's going to say? You are there to learn and to be honest, you won't remember who was in your class your first semester freshman year when you are a senior, for example, but you will regret that you did not ask those questions in that intro to psychology class where now you need those bases. So definitely ask and don't be afraid of asking. And then the student center instruction is chaotic, <clears throat> but it teaches you to be adaptable and flexible. I was questioning myself at the beginning when I was expecting um, more teacher professor telling us content classes, I was waiting for that knowledge to be poured into my head. And then it, it, the expectation was for me to be self-driven for me to look for the answers for me to be participative and I was like no 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 no. this is not the way how I should learn this is not teaching me to be a good um, I don't know a teacher or a future doctor so I needed content right but no actually now I realized how <clears throat> the student-centered instruction is actually helpful because the way how they put you and push you out of the comfort zone really helps you because when you come to a new internship, a new summer camp, or a new job, you really know how to become flexible and find your way because you've been in that. You've been into a classroom where they just throw a syllabus at you and say, good luck. <laughs> so it's the same here. You've been prepared for years. And after four years, you come to a job and tell you, these are your tasks. You're ready because you had the experience. So I think these are my biggest lessons. And I would love to um share more with you if in future you would like to contact and have a talk about this okay now we would have a short interactive activity so i think um <clears throat> we would like to show you this short clip of a classroom in the us and sort of pay attention to what is going on in the classroom 
no need to les listen to what this professor is teaching, but mostly how the students are interacting and how do you see him approaching the students or maybe how are the students responding? Just your general impressions of how this class looks like. Of today's class. Uh, how many of you have worked in some organization of some kind in the past? It could be a very small or a very big organization. It doesn't matter. I'm sure all of you have worked in some capacity someplace, right? That means you have worked in an organization, which means you should have had exposed, been exposed to some form of internal control. Just to get the uh, discussion going, uh, let me talk about Fuqua for a second, and we can also talk about Fuqua more. Uh, how many of you have seen this? The grill menu at the cafeteria. You all seen it, right? How many of you actually filled it in? How many of you have obtained food without filling this in? All right, this is the failure of internal control, right? So let's think about what is the purpose of this grill menu? So what do you think is the purpose of this? Anyone? What do you think they have it for, Jonathan? Maybe keep track of what's being sold. Okay, keep track of what's being sold. Joe? Speed things up. You know, speed things up. So it, it has both notions of what may be called internal control, but also operating aspects of uh, of the particular document. Yes, Anastasia. Uh, Huh, not to get the cooks confused about the ordering mechanisms. Yeah, Peter. Loss prevention. How, how, how can they get loss prevention? Everybody's required to fill out, and I think so, 20 burgers, and really you're missing 25 of them. You know that somewhere along the line, five So burgers. you can keep track of exact usage, right, in terms of spillage, uh, losses, and so on. Okay. It's a thing. It's a thing. Uh, like, will then be. It's time for that. It has no numbering. It doesn't seem like well, we know they're not keeping track because how many of you had actually filled it in? <laughs> well, if uh, three fourths of you haven't filled it in, what is the point of this whole exercise, right? So, Peter, do you think they're accomplishing the objective of loss prevention? Did okay. <laughs> Lava, would you tell you notice something different in the academic approach? Sure, because I well, I, I saw that like students have interactions directly with the professor uh, without hands up or just speak out his or her thoughts and opinion or com comments. And also like they have food and drinks on their desks. Um, and like uh, all the students are diverse. Um, uh, it's a high diversity and also like the professor use a menu or something to 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 talk to talk about his topic and it's very like attractive mm -hmm. yes yeah, definitely this usage of resources outside the classroom material like also those ap applying things from like the common day things the students actually see and use. So I think real life examples is something that is very used in the classrooms and definitely the food. That was something I've noticed too. And I remember like, I particularly noticed that part because it was something very unfamiliar to me when I came to US and students would just eat and they would come with their breakfast or like coffee to the classroom and that was all fine. So. I think, yes, those are definitely differences and how students are actually very um, initiative taking and the professor is not uh, sort of choosing a student to answer, but mostly like looking who wants to answer to then pull those answers from them and building on the student's point of view. Yes. Okay. Yeah, it, it reminds me that I had one course uh, about like interviewing methodology and like when the teacher uh, talk about how to interview people and our first lesson, the uh, first lesson is about observation and the teacher asked all of us to observe people in public public areas and I, um, my teammates and I uh, went to Sephora to, to take notes and write down our observation. And some of our classmates went to coffee shops, Starbucks or McDonald's to, to make observations. And that was the first time I did, I, I, 
I joined the cl uh, class at, like that. And I think those are very different from classes in other countries, um, and especially in China, because I uh, studied like 24 years in China. And but these are all amazing experience in the US. And thank yes. you so much for Bella sharing your story and your lessons with all of us. Oh, this class. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sorry, sorry. I was sharing to your next slide and I played the video again. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. No worries. And I will continue to share my story with you. Um, because, so I introduced myself as a designer in the very beginning and hearing this a lot of people might think that I am an art student or choose media design as my first major. However, the answer is no. So I'm going to share my story with how did I choose my major? How did I change my major? And um, my new journey in the United States. So I actually, I studied public management in my undergraduate just because my parents believe that the future development of this major is more stable and it is more suitable, suitable for my academic performance in Gaokao, which is the uh, entrance examination of Chinese um, uh, colleges. And in the beginning, I didn't know much about this major. <clears throat> and when I learned about this major after a year of study, and I found that I didn't like it. But I had missed the time to change my major in my alma mater in China. So I have made up my mind to change my major with my internal passion during graduate school. And then the question is, how did I find my internal passion? Um, I think this might be a common question among young students. And from my personal experience, I found four ways to help me to explore, uh, to explore myself. Uh, the first point is write or draw down or take pictures of every little thing that makes you happy. Since I was a kid, I've had lots of weird ideas such as carving my erasers into cartoon characters, observing and drawing main home covers, and tasting the ground snow in winter, which um, my, mother, my mother always said, I'm a weirdo. <laughs> but I'm so glad that I recorded all these moments with a pen or a camera. And when I look back at these photos, I'm often inspired and have new ideas that help me with my design work. And next point is have conversations with yourself. I listed three ways like journal, letter, or talk. And I think this main purpose for this point is to confess to yourself. And um, I'm a vlogger, so sometimes when I shoot a video, I'd like to talk to, to the camera and I will get to know about myself more clearly through these conversations, which are real and free of distraction. Uh, and the third point is participate in more activities and talk to more people. So I love stand up a stand up comedy, and I was the only female stand up comedian in the comedy club of my college. And when I found people who have the same interests as me, I am I was more willing to share my hobbies, my inspirations, wisdom, and also I will get to get more support from them. And that what drives me to make a difference um, from like from make a difference and find my internal passion. So the last point is take courses of other majors. Actually, many classes in college are open and taking classes in other majors can help you figure out if the major is really for you. And I had some media and design courses when I exchanged at Stockholm University in Sweden. And this experience convinced me that I want to study this major. And so after the exchanging the exchange student experience in Sweden, I like did college and major research and found there is a program called Media Design at Emerson College, which combines 
all my interest and passion. So I started to apply for this program with detailed preparation and finally got the offer. Then I went to um, the US, went to Boston to have a new journey with media design. And I love my major. I gained a lot of from this journey and I'll cover four academic features in this program. So first of all, um, for this major, it's a project-oriented study or project-oriented program. Most of my courses are project-oriented. We may develop an online game or a macro film or user-centered design for websites or applications. And we usually uh, use, apply Google, Google Spring methodology into our process from brainstorming to interviews, uh, to make personal, uh, to make user personas and scenarios and user journey map, prototyping and testing, and so many times iterations. And finally with, deliver, uh, with deliverables. And I have experience in designing a Zoom game called Planet Together, where youth, uh, youth are played into uh, teams to play civic games. The aim is to get youth comfortable with thinking through civic design process and empowering them to feel like they ha have a voice in their community. So this kind of project-based learning cultivates a new learning habit for me, which enables me to solve problems through uh, systematic design thinking. And the second, uh, the second point for uh, this program is like group work. You won't be alone on a project, trust me. So most of the projects are teamwork. You will collaborate with your team members and learn from each other, support each other and encourage each other. Take my thesis as an example. It was an eight month design process. It's a very long process for me. And the pro process is interact, uh, inter Relative. I can't remember how many changes and iterations we have gone through from the first idea to the final product. But I know that every change has been meaningful. So thanks to all of my team members' support and encouragement, I could have made it to the end and delivered the product to our stakeholders. And the third point is about advisors. I think all the advisors I met in, um, at Emerson College are, are amazing and awesome, and they are very helpful. I can remember that I had conversations with my physics advisor, Elisa, twice a week. And one is for group meeting and the other one is a personal meeting every week. And she is very skillful and experienced, and she gave us a lot of inspirations and suggestions. Also, professors are very open in the US, as Bella mentioned. You could feel free to make an appointment with them and talk to them or email them. And I think those are helpful experiences. Uh, also, last but not least, as for internships, I worked as an intern in WGPH, uh, which is a um, PBS member television station licensed to Boston. And I got this opportunity at the Emerson College Career Fair. And there are a lot of internship resources both on campus and off campus. So taking advantage of these opportunities and doing more internships is important for your personal growth and also for your career path. Uh, and last but not least, I would like to share some of my thoughts on this open question. How can we study better in the United States with a more open academic culture? Um, I think the, f the most important thing is that use all the resources you can, like I listed writing center, career center, uh, counseling center, professors, advisors, linkers, and libraries, and libraries. 
So um, all of these are valuable resources. For example, in writing center, as international student, we all have problems in writing papers and reports. And writing center can help you correct your language mistakes and cultivate your English style thinking. And also counseling center is um, also very helpful because sometimes in China, counsel counseling can be a hard thing to talk about, or some people may think they only go to see a, a doctor or a counselor if they are sick. But in America, it's a normal thing. When I first, took, uh, when I first came to the US, I was very stressed and didn't know who to talk to because I, didn't know like friends and like people in the US. And then I came across an advertisement for the school counseling center. And I began to talk to my counselor once a week. After about half a year, I became more confident and outgoing and no longer felt afraid and made a lot of good friends at school. So, I mean, all of these resources are very helpful and the most important thing is those are free. <laughs> So make sure you take advantage of all of these resources. And next thing is be active in group study. I talked a lot on the last page. So believe me, you will gain a lot of support and courage through this process. And I want to say that I, um, I can't imagine uh, how can I finish my thesis project with my group mates help. <laughs> and the last one is um, find your passion and be self-driven. The academic culture in the US is very open and no one is forcing or requiring you to do anything. Because when I study in China, I think like teachers and parents are always like required to ask you to do some tasks or uh, to study. But like in, in this environment in the US, no one forces you to do anything. So self-discipline becomes more, even more important. Um, so all of these are my uh, personal experience and lessons. And I believe uh, if you can, uh, like, if, if you can gain something, uh, gain something from our webinar, that would be a great thing. And that would be amazing. And um, so this is all about our webinar. And uh, we would like to um, hear more about your thoughts and comments. And also, if you want to uh, ask questions or learn more about linker service, learn more about our linkers, um, uh, welcome to our community. So for a limited time, uh, we welcome you to register for a free trial for, by email us at learner at gtlink. Uh, gt dot us um, and our linker team will contact you to schedule your individualized linker service or answer any questions you may have also for um, users you can visit our website at this uh, address to learn more about our linker service also for wechat users you may scan the qr code to add our um, GTL link, GT linker, and also add into our GT link, uh, GTL group, and uh, we will like help you to get get to the linker service as well. And also, uh, a way, our community is based on Microsoft Teams, which is an application you can download it on your my smartphone or on your laptop and it's very convenient to chat with all the community members and we welcome you to GTL. So thank you everyone. Thank you.